Hello students, in these slides we will talk about uh, bioremediation uh, through fungi. Uh, in these slides we will also discuss uh, the types of bioremediation, what are the different mechanisms used by fungi uh, as a bioremediators and uh, what are the effect factors which are affecting this bioremediation. So first of all we must know what is bioremediation. Bioremediation is the process in which we use microorganisms or plants for the removal of environmental pollutants or prevent the further pollution. Uh, the removal of organic waste by the microbes uh, for environmental uh, cleaning or environmental uh, cleanup is the essence of bioremediation. The other names of bioremediation are uh, biotreatment, bioreclamation, and biorestoration. So what are xenobiotics and what are the uh, bioremediators? Xenobiotics are actually the unnatural foreign and uh, synthetic chemicals uh, like pesticides, herbicides and other chemicals which are used, uh, which are used for uh, the agricultural uh, interventions for controlling uh, weeds, pests and diseases. Uh, similarly, microorganisms uh, which are used for uh, bioremediations are called bioremediators. So this process is the most economic uh, remedial uh, approach for uh, treating most organic fuel based contaminants such as coal tars and liquors and petroleum etc. And petroleum related uh, hydrocarbons uh, like benzene and uh, naphthalene and some other inorganics. So this is our triple bioremediation is our triple corner process in which organic and inorganic uh, nutrients uh, which are present in the soil, water or air are removed by the uh, microorganisms, plants and enzymes. So what are the factors which are important for the microbial bioremediations? First of all, the population of microbes, uh, there must be suitable population of the microbes uh, to bio uh, degrade the contaminants. Similarly, oxygen uh, must be present for support of the aerobic bioremediation or biodegradation of the uh, pollutants. Uh, so it is said that 2% of oxygen uh, should be present uh, in the soil or uh, in the or 0.4 mg milligram of uh, oxygen per liter of the soil water. Similarly, uh, there will be optimum moisture present uh, in the soil, uh, for example, five, uh, 50 to 70 percent of the uh, water holding capacity uh, must be present in, in the soil. Nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, sulfur and other uh, nutrients uh, should be present in the soil and water for the support of the microbial growth and uh, temperature should be optimum uh, like from 0 to 40 degrees centigrade with the pH of uh, uh, neutral pH of uh, 6.5 to 7.5 pH. There are different uh, types of uh, bio uh, remediation processes uh, like biostimulation, bio augmentation and intrinsic bio remediation. First type of uh, uh, bioremediation is the biostimulation uh, that is inv that involves the modification of the environment uh, for stimulation of uh, the existing uh, fungi and bacteria uh, which are capable of doing the bioremediation. So this is mainly brought about by the addition of uh, various forms of uh, rate limiting nutrients uh, and electron acceptors, uh, for example, phosphorus, nitrogen, oxygen and carbons. Uh, in the form of uh, molasses, these are added uh, for the stimulation of the uh, population of the uh, bio remediators in the soil or water. Similarly, the next one is bio augment augmentation. Bio augmentation is the process in which we add the microbial cultures uh, to the soil to speed up the uh, degradation of the contaminants. 
organisms uh, that originate from the contaminated areas may also uh, be able to break down uh, the waste, uh, but perhaps inefficiently, uh, inefficiently and slowly. So this is why uh, these uh, microbes are cultured in the lab and uh, then they are applied into the soil. The third one is the intrinsic bioremediation. Uh, in this uh, process, uh, we manage the innate capabilities of naturally occurring microbes to degrade contaminants without uh, taking any engineered steps uh, to enhance the process, like uh, in case of uh, biostimulation and uh, uh, bioaugmentation, uh, we engineer uh, that uh, uh, microbes, microbiomes. So in this case, uh, the capabilities of naturally occurring microbes are enhanced and managed. So, how we can use uh, the fungi for bioremediation? This process is called uh, microremediation. Uh, in this process, we use uh, uh, fungi for uh, degradation of the uh, toxins. And apart from fungi, Bacteria, plants, and algae are also used for the remediation, but micro uh, remediation is the remediation by using fungi. Why we should use fungi uh, for this process? Uh, there is an excessive amount of data in the literature uh, that shows that uh, fungi has very good uh, capabilities for bio remediation. Uh, fungal nutrition depends on the release of different enzymes by the mycelium into the substrate. Uh, those fungal enzymes are able to degrade the pollutants as well. Uh, fungi are organized as mycelia, which provides flexibility and also the resilience uh, not found in other, other microorganisms. Fungi degrade a large number of hazardous uh, substances like uh, has just pollutants like DDT, uh, polychlorinated uh, biphenyls, uh, pH, polyacrylic aromatic hydrocarbons, and pesticides, dioxins, and uh, chlorophenols and explosives. So all these uh, chemicals are uh, degradable by the fungi. Uh, so what are the mechanisms which are uh, used by the fungi for uh, toxin uh, biodegradations? So this could be hydrolysis, dehalogenation, uh, ether cleavage, methylation, hydroxylation, deamination. Uh, there are many uh, basidium acids uh, which use different uh, enzymes such as phenol oxidases. Uh, there is no uniform chemical mechanism of the degradation of these enzymes known yet. It is suggested that free radicals ions are formed uh, by these uh, uh, enzymes which attack various chemical bonds to degrade them. For example, uh, white uh, rod fungi, uh, these are basidium acids which are able to degrade lignin uh, with, the, with the help of phenol oxidases and uh, the unspecific nature of uh, this degradation mechanism explains their ability to degrade uh, pollutants in addition to the lignin. So fungi as a soil uh, bio, uh, bio remediators, soil uh, remediation is uh, to store the soil to its natural pollution free state. Uh, decontamination of the environment uh, by the use of fungal based technologies known as microremediation, as we discussed earlier. When wastewater of the industries is used for agricultural purposes, uh, there are different contaminants which are, uh, which are uh, present, which are uh, introduced into the agricultural soils, and these contaminants and uh, pollutants and toxins must be uh, removed by using bioremediation. The use of fungi to degrade contaminants in the agricultural lands, uh, for example, a white rot fungi can degrade, degrade insecticides, herbicides, uh, coal tars, and 
turn them into the carbon dioxide, water, and other basic elements. Uh, the fun fungi secrete uh, fungi secrete enzymes like lacase uh, that also uh, that are also valuable for the bioremediation process. For example, uh, there are different examples in which uh, different fungi uh, can degrade different biochemicals. For example, uh, Candida species degrade formaldehydes, Gibrella uh, Gibrella uh, species. Uh, these are uh, uh, the molds. Uh, Candida species are uh, actually the uh, yeast and Gibrella are molds. And uh, these degrade uh, cyanide, which is very dangerous pollutant in the soil. Similarly, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae removes the heavy metals from the soil and penicillium is involved in the biodegradation of petroleum, uh, petroleum, um, you know, products. I hope you like uh, this video. Thank you very much. Uh, please share with your friends. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.